think we live in an information environment around AI where the negative stories that people tell about it are most prominent in the media today, and I think there's a very good reason for that. The reason that we're giving airtime to the you know, frenzied and somewhat unhinged, insane um, science fiction tales of impending, self-recursively improving AI doom is because those are easy stories to tell. They tell about a concrete, very specific doom that we all face, we, which we will arrive through non-specific means. They never ever really seem to get to that part. Um, but it's an easy story to tell because it's concrete. We will create this system, it will recursively self-improve until it's far smarter than any, than any human being who has ever lived. And at that point, we'll no longer be able to control it because we will have invented God and then for some reason, God will decide that the best course of action is to kill us all. It's a very simple story to tell. I've just told it to you in probably five seconds. The story of the actual benefits of AI is more complex than that because what we're dealing with is a general purpose system that has applications to so many areas of human endeavor that telling it as a unified thing is it's just simply much more difficult. It's a complex story. And in the media, and you know, apologies to those present, but in the media, the simplest story is often the one that wins because it spreads the fastest. It's the easiest story to tell. It's the easiest story to repeat. It's the easiest story to repeat around your July 4th barbecue where everybody's going to be asking you, well, what do you think of this chat GPT thing? Is it going to kill us all? Think about how ridiculous that sounds uh, when I phrase it that way. So let's talk about the benefits. Let's talk about some of these complexities. So as, as was mentioned, I, I have a startup. Uh, my startup is in AI. We make something that we think of as programmable memory for large models. Um, we are a small team, but we are a small team punching above our weight because we use AI tooling as part of what we build. Um, my, me personally, my productivity as a programmer, and it's been mentioned before, has increased probably two, three, four, five fold. Why? because I can distill the complexity of the, any given programming problem that I'm working with down to a simple natural language question and then receive information that I can then quickly iterate on in tandem with artificial intelligence with these systems. We are building internal tooling that will accelerate all aspects of our business on the properties of large language models because we are able to interact with them so flexibly and we are able to have them perform a very wide variety of tasks, everything from dealing with email and scheduling to difficult technical problems and managing distributed systems and load balancing. These are all things we're building internally to accelerate us as a company. This is a clear business benefit, it's a clear economic benefit. But consider how many more businesses can now be started, how many more companies can be founded because you no longer need a team of dozens of people to build all these systems for your company. You can simply have them and import them and instead work on the problem that exists out in the world, not in your business, as the thing that you as a founder are actually focused on. How many more people will have access to that now who never would have had access to it before without raising millions of dollars? from venture capital. That's, that's an incredible capability that's at least on par with the web and the PC where ordinary people had the ability to publish to millions of people around the world. This is a technology that is at least at that level. Now, to answer some of these questions, what positive milestones in AI might we see coming in the next 10 years? Some of them have already been mentioned. I'm not gonna repeat them in too much depth, but the Bloom's Two Sigma effect of personal tutoring for each individual child, that's very real. And I think the other piece that makes this technology so difficult to think about in a positive light is when you have a general purpose technology, it's very difficult to predict the second and third order effects. So let's, let's, try to, let's try to take a look at what it actually means to have a system which can individually teach a person any subject. Let's think about that on a global scale. So of course we're gonna improve educational outcomes for children, that's great. However, think about this as a species level capability. How much faster are we as a species able to deal with crises when we have a cognitive augmentation that any person can pick up? Imagine if in the next pandemic, rather than spending months trying to sequence the disease and tell people that we need to sanitize surfaces rather than trying to deal with it as aerosolized, we instantly could spin up thousands of people to a PhD level understanding on this specific virus and figure out exactly what we need to do. AI doesn't generate crises, it increases our ability to deal with them as a species. 
And this is a capability that has existed only for this first time in history. We've passed from the network age, we're entering the intelligence age. One of the biggest, there are only a few bottlenecks on humanity as a species. One of those is energy, another is food, and the last one, which we're finally knocking down now, is intelligence. Thank you. <laughs>